Yeah, we're reacting to the late nightmare of Jimmy Fallon. That's what we're gonna watch right now by Sunny V2, bro. There's an undeniable sincerity that emanates from Jimmy Fallon. He's not just a talk show host. He's a friend you've known for years, <laughs> inviting you into his world with open arms. Debatable. Since his late night debut in 2009, Jimmy has almost unanimously been loved by fans and celebrities. The people closest to Jimmy, the ones he relies on the most, have come forward to reveal that his actual character uh -oh. behind the scenes is the total opposite of lovable and genuine. Mm -mm. Erratic behavior, outbursts, intimidation. Of I have outbursts all the time. Void eye contact. My toes. Nobody told Jimmy no. These quotes don't sound like the unapologetically joyful Tonight Show host we know, but these revelations might not be shocking to some. As many people have speculated, Jimmy's nice guy persona is entirely fake. Mm. More specifically, his fake laugh. His laugh. I hate his laugh. <laughs> Like, he's clearly fake. I don't know why he started a video talking about some genuine one. That a fake is shit. <laughs> Jimmy will laugh at just about everything, to the point where he sounds like a programmed laugh track being controlled by a producer backstage. If you think about embarrassment, scale of 1 to 10. Okay. 1 is just like being a person walking down the street. Mm -hmm. And 10 is, for me, uh, co-hosting the Oscars with James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. Without letting Ann mention why this was embarrassing, Jimmy just bursts out into laughter when there was nothing funny about what she said. Uh -huh. And then he tries to connect my, uh, my, my right foot to my left arm. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to connect them like this. And I'm in such pain, I go uh, like that. Yeah. And, it, and, his, and his belly goes in my mouth. <laughs> Even Ryan Gosling looked at Jimmy confused as to why he was laughing so hard. They both play it off <laughs> awkwardly because they quickly realize this is harmless and it only makes them look better or funnier. There's no point in calling him out, but Taylor Swift wasn't having it. Ooh, W Taylor Swift! Oh, Swifty, Swifty! Uh, the VMAs are coming up August 24th, and they're saying, I heard that Taylor Swift will be performing. Can you confirm or deny? Um... I mean, we've had a really good time today. Taylor! So, Taylor! See where I'm going with this at least. Nobody ever listens to me. Oh it's my gosh. Oh my god. So, what I was saying is. Why are you looking at me? Because I'm, cause I'm trying to think of what to say next. If he isn't. Yeah, bitch! Let her think! Sorry. Interrupting them with laughter, he is interrupting them with other pointless talking. Taylor Swift's frustration was a little more obvious than David Spade's. Carson wasn't even the first one, but I squeaked yeah. on. You did stand up. When I did, uh, I'll tell the story. When I... <laughs> <laughs> David just gave him a little jab, and Jimmy knew he was wrong for interrupting the comedian, <laughs> so he tried to make Dave look like the bad guy and walk off. This wasn't the first time Jimmy walked off set to avoid an awkward situation that he caused. No, it's about uh, uh -oh. how uh, you can beat a human well, being down to I, Is this like government plants or something? I don't understand how these people even get clout, for real. Like, who's Jimmy Fallon? Is he an actor or something? Like, who? what is his resume? He's so annoying. But what is his resume to like talk show hosts are such a mixed bag, but like what do they do before even becoming a talk show host and why? Yapping. They're just professional yappers. He's not an actor. I think he was a comedian before. He's a comedian. Oh, oh go f yourself, dude. I don't believe none of that. It's okay. Let him just, uh, just see the movie yeah, or not yeah. or not. Yeah. You know what the movie's about kind of, right? Yeah, so you don't need me. You don't need me. No, no. Dude, no you nice. don't need me. Doing, no, 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 Let's go. No, come back, come back. Come on, man. This is a safe way to play off his awkward interruptions because no host would ever walk off their own show for a tiny error. Often, it seems like Jimmy has nothing substantial to add to the conversation True. but feels the need to interrupt or explode with laughter. The internet has memed Jimmy's antics into oblivion. While some say he has a huge ego and wants more spotlight for himself, it seems like he does this to maintain control. He fears dead air, a boring story, or an unfunny joke. So I mean... To be fair, as an entertainer with a talk show, yeah, I get that. He jabs his way into the conversations with quick jokes or laughs in an attempt to make sure the audience is engaged, but then it ends up doing the opposite. Uh -oh. I mean, every time a guest is talking, he leans in, stares at them intensely, maybe reaches his arm out, and is waiting for a split second to interrupt to make sure you are entertained. The other thing that agitates people is how he showers every single guest with compliments. You're my favorite, we love you, it's my favorite movie, my favorite album, as if celebrities need any more 
ego stroking. Jimmy's defenders think all this controversy is ridiculous. I'll do the opposite. Oh my God, I would love to do the opposite. I'll be like, you got a big ass head. Look like that. Or you got a snaggle tooth. Don't smile at me too hard. Tell your story facing the other way. Your breath hot. Should he not laugh? Just sit there and be awkward? His show is supposed to be fun. He just wants his guests to be relaxed and confident in front of a live audience. This can definitely explain his overreactions to guests winning his mini games. Look. Sounds like a poodle. Uh -huh. A leopard turtle. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it seems ridiculous to nitpick this from Jimmy because fake reactions have been a crucial part of TV and YouTube forever. True. David Dobrik, KSI, and Joe Rogan have been large contributors to the fake laughter, fake reaction epidemic. Okay. Ah. And if you think there is... Was that his laugh? Ah. I know everything. <laughs> I'm laughing like that now. Ah. I kind of do agree with a lot of what he says. Jimmy is a people pleaser. I like he just that. wants to make everyone comfortable. Bless it is one of them. Yeah, that's that me. Is the opposite to me. Uh, it feels like he's something. And Jimmy may be hiding something. A lifetime of alcoholism. And the reason he began drinking may shock you. As a teenager, Jimmy was obsessed with Saturday Night Live. The program had been running for nearly two decades, and Jimmy was fully immersed, insisting on watching the program alone in pure silence because he hated unnecessary commentary from others. Although he could only see the clean parts his parents taped for him, Jimmy didn't miss a single sketch or punchline and remained devoted to learning as much as possible. Mm. Ironically, his parents didn't want him watching adult humor sketches, but they would let him drink alcohol while watching. As long as I wasn't doing anything at night, I'd just sit by myself and I would have a six pack of Pabst. I don't know if I made it all the way through the six, but I'd just sit there and watch the show and tape it. He and his sister Gloria reenacted sketches with friends before Jimmy discovered a talent for impressions, often impersonating actor James Cagney and comedian Dana Carvey. I was one of those kids who, if I hung around another kid for an hour, I was ah! that kid. Fallon said, It was weird. I'd come home and I'd do his type of humor, his type of mannerisms. And my mom would say, Okay, Joey, you want dinner now? Because I'd be acting like Joey Gonzalez. From a young age. <laughs> ah! His mom got jokes. <laughs> ah! Age, Jimmy was an imitator, instinctively copying and mimicking things that he thought were funny instead of having the drive to produce his own material, mm. which was an early sign of being the perfect late night television host. Uh -oh. Through hours of meticulously studying various comedy and musical routines, Fallon continued working on his craft and established himself as a performer at Sauger T's High School, appearing in most stage productions. It was a rush. I think it was the rush of getting a reaction. Maybe it's acceptance. Maybe it's a thing where you're pleasing somebody. I want to be friends with everybody. And if you make a joke and everyone laughs, you're like, that's it. I scored. Mm. That's what I thought making a friend was. Ah, that's like me in chat when I try to get some kick W's. Ah, you just feel like people liked you. So maybe it was that acceptance. It seems like Jimmy's Do you accept me, chat? People ah! pleaser mentality has been in full effect since his youth. His obsession with Saturday Night Live carried on throughout his time at St. Rose College in New York, skipping parties and events. But f me, no. You y'all be chilling with me all the time. What do you mean no, bro? Yeah, somewhat. I'll take a somewhat. I'm fine with that. Please stop with the fake laugh, Kenji. What's fake about it? What are you talking about? To be honest, I do the same thing. I've watched Kenji for a while now, and I've started saying some of the things he says. Um, like, what are you talking about? It's fine. A lot of a lot of people do it, bro. A lot of people do it. I, I don't like when they pass it off as their own, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't, I don't think I like that. It's kind of annoying for real. And so that he could watch SNL as it aired. Fallon lived for the weekends when he would regularly board buses. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Aunt's house in Fort Hamilton to perform stand-up comedy sets at Caroline's on Broadway and Times Square. On stage is where Jimmy felt most at home, and his urge to make audiences laugh couldn't be ignored as he dropped out of college in 1995 to, move to Los Angeles, California to pursue comedy full time. He secured a manager who got him very minor roles in comedy films like Father's Day and television sitcoms like Spin City, but it didn't matter because his dream wasn't to become an actor. Jimmy remained fixated on joining Saturday Night Live. After two years of working on his sketch comedy and improv skills with the Groundlings, he took a leap of faith and auditioned for SNL. Now, but bombed. This career setback could have killed his dreams as a comedian altogether, but his obsession with SNL wouldn't let him give up. When he landed ah! a small role on the Warner Brothers sitcom, Fallon negotiated a clause in his contract that would release him if he got on SNL. The producers agreed only because they thought it would never happen. This was my ultimate goal. Whoa. If I ever cut into a birthday cake and made a wish, I would wish to be on SNL. If I threw a coin into a fountain, I would wish to be on SNL. If I saw a shooting star, I would wish to be on SNL. Jeez. It's crazy. I had no other plan. I didn't have friends. 
friends. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have anything going on. I had my career. And that SNL. Was it. SNL is notorious for its difficult audition stage. The series creator, Lorne Michaels, almost never laughed during auditions, and it would take a special talent to grab his attention. Fallon recalls three different people warning him about Lorne's lack of laughter, but he learned a lot from his first catastrophic performance. In his second audition, he would come prepared with nothing but himself and his impressions, something that he perfected over time. Jimmy marched on that stage, performing a celebrity walkathon with impressions of Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Bill Cosby, and Adam Sandler. To his surprise, Michaels and other executives could not stop laughing. I was in the room that oh. day, says former SNL writer Tina Fey. He's one of two people I've ever seen who was completely ready to be on the show. Kristen Wiig is the other one. And Jimmy was ready like if there had been a show to do that night. Oh, Lauren shit. Michaels informed Jimmy that his dreams were now a reality. He was going to be a cast member of oh, Saturday crazy, Jimmy. Night Live. All Jimmy could do was look at Michaels and tell him, I'm going to make you proud. He debuted beside the cast of SNL as a featured player during its 24th season in September 1998. I never watched this, I'm not going to lie to you. Is that The Rock? With a mustache and crazy pork chops on his head? Fallon established himself as a household name overnight, becoming known for his spot-on impressions of various celebrities and public figures. While he was living out his dream, Jimmy was also developing a scary addiction that uh -oh. would come back to haunt him oh, decades no. later. During their time at SNL, Fallon and cast member Horatio Sands often Horatio? drank together. Sands has described himself and Fallon as super functioning alcoholics and stated that kind of goes hand in hand with SNL. Some kind of substance abuse issues oh, no. because it's so stressful you could easily find yourself blowing off steam a lot. Sands recounted how he and Fallon got in a couple of brawls. I've seen Jimmy clock a few people, he said. Jimmy could fight. I don't know where he learned, but he definitely <laughs> scrapped with the best of them. Jimmy working in a high stress environment and abusing his health to cope is potential foreshadowing for the work environment he uh -oh. would create on his own show. He always planned to leave Saturday Night Live after three seasons. However, Lorne Michaels offered him a role on Weekend Update with Tina Fey, which is essentially the comedic news section that SNL Ooh. covers every week. Unfortunately, Jimmy also developed a negative reputation on SNL as somebody who can't hold in his laughter. At first, it was an innocent mistake that began in the famous More Cowbell sketch, when Will Ferrell wore a tight shirt that caused Fallon to break character. Every cast member was laughing during during this skit because, well, it was hilarious. But that moment opened a revolving door of cast members intentionally trying to get Jimmy to break character, and he did break character a lot. Oh no. I gotta stop doing that chat. I gotta stop laughing. I, I won't break character. I won't be me. Look, you can't make me laugh. Someone tell a joke. You ain't gonna make me laugh. Watch. Long ass head. Ah, you got me. Interrupting the punchlines and comedic timing by laughing and giggling. While some thought it was hilarious, others found it <laughs> and believed he was attempting to steal their spotlight and make the sketches about himself. Lauren didn't like it. The writers didn't like it. I'm not trying to do it on purpose. I'm trying not to do it. But sometimes it just got insane. I couldn't hold it in. It was just so much fun. SNL has always tried to maintain the best of the best when it comes to comedic talent. Comedians Who is that? Their... Hold on. Who, who is, is that? that? Who is who is this? Chat, I need a name. Someone probably watched this shit. I know she she probably old as shit now. I don't care. Who is that? I love her. I need to find her. She mine. I'm gonna marry her. She gonna love me. She gonna love this. She gonna take my coochie. I don't know, bro. You don't know. Why is Pete Davidson there? He is? Oh, he's in the middle. I see him. I didn't watch that generation. I like the girl below her. Nah. She love me. Look at her. Like, oh my God, you're gonna be mine and I'm gonna be yours. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I love you, girl. You mine. Err, um, what do you mean? How are we supposed to know? I don't know. Delusion at its best. Please. I tear three sub to you. I love you, girl. Please. She wants some Kenji. Yeah, she wants some of this. You staring at me, huh, girl? You want some of this? Oh, she want me to go up there. I'm not gonna do it to you. I'm not gonna do it to you, sexy head. Ah! maintain the best Beautiful the best when it comes to comedic talent. Comedians laughing at their own jokes can sometimes be seen as unprofessional. Hey, thank you, Ray. Before Jimmy decided to leave SNL and move into traditional acting. He signed a two-movie deal with 20th Century Fox with the hopes of becoming a prominent star in the industry. The first was a lead role in the 2004 action comedy Taxi, alongside then-rapper turned actor Queen Latifah. The other was the 2005 romantic comedy Fever Pitch, alongside Drew Barrymore. That was Barrymore. terrible. Both films received mixed reviews and had decent box office performance, but were not the first impression Jimmy Fallon wanted. With back-to-back -back disappointments, film offers rapidly decreased as studio executives grew hesitant to feature Fallon in future projects. Dang. He experienced what he has deemed a lost period, characterized by a larger-than-usual alcohol consumption and uncertainty about his future career choices. Chat, alcohol is a drug. I don't care if you if you don't agree with me. Alcohol is a drug. Don't do it. It's bad for you. I was probably drinking more than I should have been drinking, he confessed. It wasn't like sitting and watching old tapes of me on SNL with the screen flickering in front of me, 
I was like, I can't figure out what I want to do. Fortunately for Fallon, the man who gave him his dream job at SNL was about to save him once again, Whoa. as the host of Late Night had an opening in 2009. Oh no, not Conan, Conan O'Brien. O'Brien was transitioning to The Tonight Show. I don't like Conan O'Brien either. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't know, dude. I don't like these talk show people. Jimmy didn't make the best first impression. Many quickly realized that Jimmy wasn't edgy or dark enough for late night comedy. GQ claimed Jimmy was too cute for late night audiences used to hanging out with the snarky cool crowd, suggesting he was too corny. Yeah, the cool crowd was always beyond my grasp, he admitted. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon premiered on NBC in early March 2009. The series immediately outperformed CBS's The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson by half a million viewers. Fallon also garnered more viewers than his predecessor, Dang. Conan O'Brien. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon was one of the first late night talk shows to embrace social media and use it as an integral part of the show's mm. engagement with its audience. Jimmy was able to connect with the youth who weren't watching TV at midnight in 2012 by regular regular uploads hey, to YouTube, hey. particularly comedic sketches and challenges with their favorite celebrities. I got these tickets uh, to the One Direction concert. Ew, I love One Direction. Do you have an extra ticket? Yeah. <laughs> Many of How did these motherfuckers get famous? How did these motherfuckers get famous, bro? These videos amassed millions of views, but it was nothing compared to the dominance he would have on The Tonight Show. In early 2014, Jimmy Fallon transitioned to NBC's The Tonight Show, where he had big shoes to fill. From Steve Allen to Jack Parr, to the iconic Johnny Carson who stamped the show's legacy for 30 years, Whoa. and Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien, it was now Jimmy's job to lead the most <clears throat> popular late night show of all time. He debuted to a staggering 11.3 million viewers, and despite all the alleged fake laughing, overreaction, interruptions and being too corny he dominated late mm. night television the show averaged three to four million live concurrent viewers throughout the years but also embraced social media with their youtube channel that has amassed 30 million subscribers mm. with multiple videos in the hundreds of millions of views a lot of jimmy's segments mimic the format of youtube challenges many of you have never even watched late night but have seen tons of the tonight show's youtube segments such as lip sync battle musical impressions and egg russian roulette where he and his guests would engage in playful competitions resulting in He's doing it, bro. Often viral moments. His comedic sketches and style often mimicked SNL because of his obsession and Lord Michael's production. Jimmy is like the personification of a golden retriever, and America loved him. And although the late night host is a high profile and often rewarding role, the pressure can be severe. Late night hosts are expected to be funny and entertaining every night. The constant <laughs> pressure to deliver humor can be mentally and emotionally taxing. Late night hosts must stay up to date with current events and pop culture trends to keep their material relevant, which requires continuous research and adaptability. The aspect of balancing multiple roles can also be demanding, as late night hosts are not just comedians, they are also producers writers, oh shit, Obama. performers in various oh, sketches and segments. Coming up with fresh and original content night after night can be creatively exhausting, as hosts must continually innovate to keep their shows interesting. Meanwhile, late night shows are often live or recorded in front of a live audience. Mm. This leaves little room for mistakes and hosts must be prepared to handle unexpected situations. Therefore, late night hosts are very much reliant on their staff to help with research, writing jokes and sketches, making sure there are as little errors as possible. These writers and employees are Jimmy's lifeline. There Whoa. is no show without them, and he made a crucial error on May 1st, 2023. Uh-oh. Uh, I wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for my writers, and I support them all the way. They gotta have a fair contract, and they got a lot of stuff to iron out, and uh, hopefully they get it done. If there is a strike, do you go dark? If there's a strike, uh, yeah, I think we, we will, yeah. I think we'll go, we'll go dark. Whatever I can do to support uh, the Guild, uh, I am actually in the Writers Guild as well, so... Uh, yeah, uh -oh. I couldn't do the show without them, and I support my He's drunk as hell? Oh, He's so Jimmy drunk? Wait, he really? Support. He's drunk? Or his writers no matter what, his staff says otherwise. As one of his employees took to Twitter to write, he wasn't even at the meeting this morning to tell us we won't get paid after this week. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, please support your staff. Had fun bowling with you last week. But <sighs> it's always so fun. In Twitter fingers, bro. Bitch, get off of Twitter, ho. Damn, blowing up the whole spot. Damn. F out of here. Had fun from bowling with you. Well, Sarah, guess what you ordered? You ordered three fucking quesadillas and some nachos, bitch. Steak nachos at that. You know how 
expensive that is. That was $65 that I paid for, Casera. Fuck you. <laughs> Party won't pay my rent. I'm sure many of you have heard about the five month long writer's strike in Hollywood that just ended. And the reason for the strike is quite simple. The Writers Guild of America is the joint efforts of two different American labor unions representing thousands of writers in film, television, radio, and online media. Mm. Writers are the backbone of Jimmy Fallon and all of Hollywood's content. Without them, there are no jokes, no scripts, no stories, nothing. Whoa. Yet somehow, they are the least compensated, with most of them earning below the poverty line in salary. Writers make a bulk of their earnings through residuals, which is a percentage that gets paid out to them every time a movie or show is streamed That's or good. syndicated in the future. But Hollywood executives restructured the industry during the streaming era so oh. these writers get basically nothing after the <gasps> content is uploaded. And the studios are profiting tens of billions while the people who are actually creating the ideas from scratch wow. are on food stamps. Wow. So Jimmy's saying he supports his staff no matter what but not increasing increasing their salaries to a livable wage had them pretty pissed off, which led to a Rolling Stone article that contacted over 50 Tonight Show employees revealing what Jimmy is really like behind the scenes. Although many praised Fallon for his immense talent and comedic gifts, nobody spoke on record or had positive things to say about working on The Tonight Show. Interestingly enough, three employees who originally worked on Late Night claim a dramatic and ugly shift in working environment uh -oh. occurred once they transitioned to The Tonight Show. People that worked under them felt this pressure that if you made one mistake, you were gone and would be easily replaced. From 2014 to 2022, there were nine different showrunners. This constant change in leadership gradually created a chaotic atmosphere among staffers who expressed their loss in faith in senior leadership. Nobody told Jimmy no. Everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. Another former employee says, you never know what Jimmy you were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. They described Jimmy's temperament, mood, and treatment of staffers as erratic. They suggested Jimmy Fallon was unpredictable, having witnessed him snap at crew members over the smallest things. They also claimed Fallon occasionally berated and belittled staffers out of frustration. Three former employees said that he berated he them got in mood of swingies. their colleagues and crew members. It was like, those. if Jimmy's in a bad mood, everyone's day is fucked. When something was wrong, we all knew how to behave afterwards, which was just sort of avoid eye contact and don't make another mistake. The article then dives into Jimmy's SNL skit in 2000, where he did an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. Jimmy oh. apologized for this skit that resurfaced in 2020, and the article followed up this information with an employee alleging that the staff tried to sweep this controversy under the rug. A black employee claims that showrunner Granite Benderman kept asking them, what is going on with your hair? Trying to paint the picture of a racist environment behind the scenes oh. at The Tonight Show. Employees claim that they experienced deteriorating health effects due to the environment, hair thinning, extreme weight loss. <laughs> Mentally, I was in the lowest place in my life. I didn't want to live anymore. One longtime employee says they never reported that- Ah! She about to herself. Ah! No! Their issues to HR because early on in their tenure at the show, they saw colleagues of theirs attempt to speak to human resources representatives and subsequently got fired from the show. Dang. They don't protect us, the former staffer says. They don't do anything for us. Many of you watching have probably get a new job, in a toxic like what? environment and have experienced similar ramifications as these employees alleged. So you can easily see this being a reality for Jimmy's show. Others speculated that this is nothing more than a hit piece. Many think that Jimmy's short temper, erratic behavior, and need for nothing less than perfection is standard for someone putting on a show for millions and millions of people. They think most of the worst allegations are against the showrunners, and Jimmy has to take the blame since he is the boss. Most people wonder why someone wouldn't just get a new job if it was so bad. Then again, Jimmy did come from SNL, which was one of the most high-stress work environments that led to multiple employees suffering from substance abuse issues. Jeez. So it's not that hard to believe that he oh, could have what? We're gonna put that on Jim. Okay, now I I don't I wouldn't go that far. Okay, maybe snapping at the employees, sure. You know what I mean? Not and not uh, I don't know helping them out and, and being erratic and, and mood swingies, sure. Okay, but we gonna blame uh, fucking uh, uh Jimmy or not Jimmy Gerald? Hmm? We're gonna blame Gerald in lighting. We're gonna if I, no, we're gonna blame Jimmy for Gerald's fucking crack addiction. F out of here! Like what? what the f are we talking about at that now now you now you're doing too much now you're doing too fucking much what are we talking about 
Then again, Jimmy did come from SNL, which was one of the most high-stress work environments that led to multiple employees suffering from substance abuse issues. So it's not that hard to believe that he could have created a similar environment, thinking it's just show business. However, after Rolling Stone published the article, Fallon apologized to staff members in a Zoom call. It's uh -oh. embarrassing, and I feel so bad, Fallon said, according to two people who were on the call. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. I feel so bad, I can't even tell you. We don't have the full apology, so we don't know if Jimmy is accepting blame for all of these allegations, for just a few, or if he is just following the command of his PR team to avoid the same outcome as Ellen. Like, comment, subscribe if you're watching the YouTube.